So this week we are focusing on some quick kind of fun Mother's Day gift ideas for any of the special women in your life. And um, and so today I'm going to kick it off with a really easy, quick, fast, fun tutorial for you. Are you ready for it? I also chose this one because yesterday happened to be May 1st, which is May Day. May Day. And in with May Day, what is tradition is, can you guess what it is? What, what is traditional, uh, a traditional item to make for May Day? Is it cones? Like flower pots? I don't know. Could be. I have no idea. But what did you say first? Cones? Cones. Yes, there you go. May Day cones. And so um, that's what we're going to make today. We're going to make yeah. May Day cones or what would be cute as, um, you know, a little Mother's Day gift or a little um, item to put on somebody's door, a neighbor's door, you know, filled with flowers or candy or Ooh, so cute um, candy. I've seen where like people put little pinwheels in them and everything. And so I actually, I accidentally left my samples at the Logan store this morning. I forgot to bring it with me. So we're gonna do it together. I can't show you Here. what it's going to look like, but we're gonna do it together. So, um, and they really are so simple to make that it's easy to do. So let's do, um, we're gonna use a little bit of hot glue today. We're gonna use the sewing machine a little bit. Um, I'm gonna use some yummy fabric, which we love that, right? And I'm also going to use the by Annie stiletto today. So I'm calling this the ruffled, um, the ruffled flower basket. Okay. All right. So what you're going to start off with is you want to have two different fabrics that are eight and a half inch square. Now you can do any size, right? any size at all. But these are gonna be two eight and a half inch square pieces. And I'm also using, uh oh, let's see. Um, what are you looking for? Where did Tammy go? Is Tammy? I don't Can know where Tammy? Tammy went. I was gonna have her cut something for me and I don't see it. Can you go see if you can Is it these? It? No, it was this paper. I'm also going to use um, oh, hey, Suzanne. Suzanne's watching. Um, I'm going to also use fusible peel and stick today. And this is the reason why I did it as um, an eight and a half inch square because the fusible peel and stick is eight and a half inches, you know, by 11, right? Which is a normal paper size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and we could even I don't see where she went. So we could even want cut. to move to the cutting table. Yeah, we can move over to the. We're gonna table. move. Guys, bear with me. Okay. We're learning. All right. Hi, Suzanne. Miss you in the store today. <laughs> oh wait, she did cut them. They're right here. Oh, she did cut it. Is this okay. it? Yeah. She just forgot to bring it over. I found no, them. Piggy. I actually will do this right here. Okay. And we're just over here at the cutting table. Um, I also need an iron. Can okay. you check on that? Yeah, it's back here. Okay, good. awesome. Okay, so we're, hey, Ann Becker. Um, I'm going to use, so you're going to cut out two eight and a half inch squares. There we go. Very pretty. Oh, this is the side. And we're going to cut out an eight and a half inch square of fusible peel and stick. Okay, now what exactly is fusible peel and stick? It is, um, has a paper backing to it and it actually becomes like a sticker. So you can use this with appliques, um, really nice and easy. See, there's a stick there. I'm going to actually be using it um, to stick two pieces of fabric together. All right, so let me go ahead and we're gonna get yeah, that plugged in it's first. Warm, it's warm. It's warm. Oh, good. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to do is, I, let me pull this down a little bit. By the way, don't let me forget to show you how all everyone down here at the Sandy store has been decorating for Shop Hop. We are doing Shop Hop starting this Friday. 
And I got to show you guys, it's amazing what they are doing down here. All right. So I have one piece of fabric with the right side facing down. And then I'm going to take my fusible peel and stick and I'm going to have the shiny side of the paper right side up. Now, I don't know how well you can see this, but it's kind of a, it is a little shiny, but it actually is a little more fibrous. That side is going to go face down on top of here. I'm gonna take the iron, we're getting it warmed up right now, but I'm gonna take the iron and I'm gonna press this into place. All right, at that point, once it's pressed into place, I will peel back revealing a sticker. Then what I can do is actually take my second piece of fabric and I'm going to just place it over top. So let's, um, Berkeley, I'm gonna let you do this, my friend. Okay, woohoo, <laughs> isn't she cute? All right, so here we go. Right side down, we're gonna place this on top. And with this, it takes a minute to get put on really well. So give it some good pressure and just go ahead and hold it rather than moving it. Okay. Give it some, are you giving it some mm -hmm. firm pressure? Awesome. Okay. So give it some fir firm pressure. Let it go for about 10 seconds and then you're going to move it. And guys, if I can do this, around. you can do this. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. And you want to make sure and get all the corners. So come up here. The top. Okay, are we mm -hmm. feeling that it's stuck? I need to get this side a little. Okay. Then I think we're there. Okay, then what I want you to do for good measure is we're going to flip this baby over and you're going to do the same thing on the other side. All right. Okay. Guys, I love ironing. Did you know that? Really? I didn't know because no one knew me, but I love ironing. <laughs> it's your favorite thing to do. Your husband probably loves that. I do love ironing. I would say it's my favorite thing to do, but mm -hmm. it's a good household chore that I like to do. There you go. That's good. You can come over to my house anytime. <laughs> okay, that's pretty hot. So we're going to let it cool down for just a minute. And of course, if you have any questions, um, let us know. Either Berkeley is very petite or that iron is huge. <laughs> the iron is huge. That's a big iron. <laughs> and Berkeley is very petite too. I will say that. All right, guys. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this back to reveal the sticker. All right. So you can go ahead. Can you hear that? That's sticking. So I just peel this back and I'm going to place it right side up. And then Berkeley, why don't you go ahead and we're gonna place the other piece of fabric right side um, up with the wrong side down. Okay, this is... And yeah, start at the top and then just kind of, oops, oh, let's, and that's okay because we can move it around. It's not permanent yet. So if you don't get it on right the first time, that's totally fine. So we're just gonna smooth out all those bumps. Hold. <laughs> Okay. All right. We're looking smooth. Okay. Looking good. Okay. All right. So now go ahead and let's take the iron to it one more time. And do you see how this has now just created um, uh, just a, 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 like, what do I want to say? Like a double-sided piece of fabric. That's what I want to say. A double-sided piece of fabric. Okay. All right. Very cool. Our corners. Yep. Looking good. All right, so now you can see that there's a little bit of stability here because of the fusible peel and stick. Um, the front is covered, the back is covered. Now, what we're gonna do next is we are going to cut this in half at a diagonal so that we actually end up with two um, triangles, all right? So I'm gonna place this down and let's come back over here and take my ruler. And we are at diagonal corner and diagonal corner. Let me get this into a better spot here. No, that's good. All right. You see? Easy peasy, right? We have two triangles. All right. So now this is how a cone is made. I'm going to show you 
um, if I were just to fold it up, but I'm also gonna show you how to cover those edges in a really fun way through a ruffle. All right, so if I were, let's see if I can do this in your direction. I like to consider it like a mountain top, all right? The very top corners at the top, so I've created a mountain. And then what I could do is I could take a little piece of glue um, or I could take a wonder clip. I was going to check real quick and see if we had something like that around here. A wonder clip? Yeah, if you could check and see if we have a wonder yeah, clip, that would be awesome. All right, so we're going to take this bottom corner and turn it around. So if I wanted glue, I could do a little glue here. And, oh, perfect. Thanks, Berkeley. And I'm going to bring it up to the very top. So just like this. You see how that's folded? It's like folded up and around and it's lined up right with the very top corner. Do you see how the cone has been formed? Okay, so I'm gonna just put a little wonder clip here to hold it in place. And then what you do is you take this piece and you wrap it all the way around to the back. Okay, now this, I haven't done it very tightly here. Let me try that again. Okay, all right. So you have a cone, let me see, that looks like this. I'm gonna get it better when I'm over at the sewing machine. But this is what is kind of cool is that See how this is just plain on top? So it's not really pretty. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually make like a little ruffle. So what I've done is I've cut a half inch piece of fabric widthwise by about 22 inches approximately. So if you had like a fat quarter lying around and you just wanted to do a half inch strip off of it, you could. And I'm going to unpin that and what I'll do is I'm going to and I'll show you when I get to the sewing machine a little bit better but I want to kind of take you through what I'm going to do here in a minute before I get to the sewing machine. So I'm just going to take one of these sides and I'm going to do like a messy what some might refer to as a messy ruffle where I'm going to pleat this as it goes along in my machine underneath the foot. I'll show you how I do that. If I do that across one short side, when I turn it, that messy ruffle will actually come around to the front of the cone. Now, another thing you could do is you could do the messy ruffle going up one side and down the other side. And you make sure that maybe when this rolls up, I'll kind of show you both ways. When this rolls up, and then we're bringing this around. Do you see how this kind of comes down? So this would be kind of fun because you would have a messy ruffle here and a messy ruffle that goes down like that. All right. You can choose whichever side you want to do it with. So whichever side you're going to have on the outside, that's where you're putting the messy ruffle up against. So let's go ahead and um, head over to the sewing machine. Yep. Guys, the Sandy store is going to be so fun for Shop Hop. <laughs> and the Logan store. But we're just in the Sandy store, so I'm seeing all the magic happen. That's right. <laughs> all right. So I have my, my half inch by 22 inch piece here. And I'm going to take um, this piece. And I'm going to start at the top just down this side. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and lay it over so it actually extends beyond the triangle to get started. I can trim it up afterwards. All right. Let me get the pushing going. I'm in the center needle position. And I just lined it up against the edge. That's it. Just right up against the raw edge here. Okay, I'll start sewing down the middle. Okay, now this is where 
the Biani stiletto comes in hand, handy because what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this fabric underneath to pleat. Okay, so let's see if we can get up a little bit closer um, right here. Okay, there we go. And as I sew, I'm going to just take it slowly. Whoops. And I'm going to see how I can see how I can just push this because of the point, because of the, um, the barbed edge here, I can pu push it down underneath the foot. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. And it just sews right over top. Push. 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 So there's really no right or wrong way to do this. I'm just doing it every half an inch or so. And you see how I'm just pushing this underneath the, the foot. Push it underneath the foot and sew over top. Push underneath the foot, sew over top. And this is how you do the messy ruffle. Pretty fun. And it just slides right underneath that foot. It's pretty, pretty snazzy. So now, even if you don't do this project, you know a way of doing a messy ruffle. And look how cute That's that is. So Isn't that fun? So cute. I love it. So then I'm going to just take some scissors and trim off my edges. I'll find you some scissors. If I had some scissors, that, that would be a here. Oh, here we right go. There. All right. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to trim off my edges here. Okay, and now I have that messy ruffle just down one side. That's it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the opposite side and begin to roll. So let's go down here, Berkeley, and I'll show them how it's done. I'm going to actually do it with the help of my glue gun. Now you could take this and you could actually sew it, but I find it easier to do it this other way. All right. So let me, sometimes you have to situate yourself and go, okay, which direction am I going? So just go ahead and play with it. So, you know, I'm going to take the opposite corner and I'm going to put a little bit of a dab of, you know, I'm not even going to put a dab of glue yet until I know it's in the right place. So I'm going to take, let's pull this down. I'm going to take this. I'm going to roll it up to the top of the mountain, right? So that the mountain is at its peak. Let's see if I can, ah, let me see. Let me put a wonder clip there. So in the back of it, you're going to see the peak right? So you form that peak. And now if I like where it's at, and I'm going to kind of pinch the bottom so that I have more of a pointed cone down here. So pinch the bottom. Make sure everything is where you want it to be. And now I'm going to take a little glue, a little bit of hot glue. Okay. And there we go. Now, you, what you want to do is you're going to follow this as you turn it. You're following all the way down the rest of that edge. All right. So we're going to follow down. And I'm going to follow down and follow down. Again, if you make sure everything is lined up there, you will be golden. And look at that. Ta-da! You have one. Uh, you have a cone, my friends. Look up here. There we go. That's dark. Yeah. And then I'm going to take a little bit of hot glue here. We love hot glue. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> and I'm just going to kind of glue that in place. So you have, let me push that down a little bit. So this is what it's going to look like in the back. I'm going to put a little more glue here. Okay. 
so this is what it looks like in the back and this is what it looks like in the front isn't that fun so there you go there you have it now what you can do and you have that messy ruffle that comes in up and around and through the front now if you wanted to have like a messy ruffle here and and then it goes down to there like more messy ruffle then you're going to do it like on on both sides of that and when you wrap it around you just don't follow that line okay you just go kind of you just roll it and it will naturally then go like down here as well but if you want it to be perfect coming down and around then you're going to follow that line all right that is that are there any questions Let's oh see what we have. let me also mention that these are so cute to like you could put lavender in there or little flowers or well as you say what is let me this pull one? this over that's what they're asking about is this what's the mat yeah oh it's just a silicone mat yeah it's just a silicone mat for hot glue um anyway so this you you i mean how pretty would it be to put little things of lavender or little daisies or candies and treats and you could even put them in a cellophane bag and have it come up um, and then you could take like a piece of ribbon and just loop it around on each side and these would be darling to um, have at a place setting but also to hang on a doorway or something like that so Suzanne says filling it with dark chocolate. There you go. Um, no, Deborah, I did not use the ruffle foot on this. So what I did was I just pushed that fabric through. Now, let me let me show that step without actually going to the machine. Let's see if I can illustrate this a little bit more. Okay. All right, my friend Berkeley, are you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm, you you're to you're gonna pretend that you are the sewing machine foot. Okay. All right. Actually, I will. This is what I'll do. Okay. okay everyone, I want this. you guys to be able to see this. So Berkeley's pretending she's the sewing machine foot. So as it's sewing, what I'm doing with this is I just push it under and it sews over top. And then I push it under and it sews over top. So you see there's no ruffling foot here. I'm simply just pushing this through. Does that help? I hope you can see that. It's coming out, but that's a pretend, okay? Yes, right. It would normally be sewn over, right? We're going crazy. So now. when we do that, we're just pushing down under. Just pushing down under. Let's see. It just continues to sew. Push, sew, push, push and sew. sew, push and we sew. We can make a song. Push and so, push and so. There we go. All right. So hopefully that helps explain how the questions. ruffling was. That's how I did the messy ruffle on here. Now, what would be cute is because we got two triangles out of this, you could do the other side. Um, you could have the, this yellow on the outside with the floral on the inside. So that, you know, that they could be, you know, they could just go and um, be opposite of each other. Donna says she's uh, captivated by your nails. Oh. So am I. Everyone kind around here has the coolest nails. Chris is boring and I do topless beats every, <laughs> every time. <laughs> but they are dang cute. I'll friend. tell my nail lady. She'll be so happy. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So can you guys imagine other possibilities of what you would put in the little ruffled flower M &Ms. cone? Oh, yes. M&M's. That would be good. Yes, I'm absolutely. Someone said something. A waffle um, cone? I thought that'd be so cute. Marilyn says it reminds her of a waffle cone, so she would add fiber fill, sprinkle it with beads for a summer ice cream centerpiece. What a cute idea. You also could do it as like a gift and make it like that. a waffle cone and put like an ice cream gift card inside. Mm -hmm. That would be cute. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, fabric bunches up. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy says, put your finger behind the presser foot, let the fabric bunch up rather than feed through. It will gently ruffle. Yes. Now, another thing you could do is a ruffling technique that I like is where you have longest length, highest tension. And when you have longest length, highest tension, that will automatically ruffle as well. This is more of like a pleated ruffle. 
like a pleated ruffle. So it's very messy. It's very fun. And um, it's just easy, easy to do. It's more of a pleated ruffle than rather a ruffle. So Anne is saying she could put sewing stuff in there. I love it. Um, Gail said she could hang them on a Christmas tree with oh, treats. Love that. Um, Oreo minis. That's a fun idea, Brenda. Um, make them you can make them with the pillow. new pillow. Definitely. That'd be cute. Um, they also love your dress. <laughs> You guys you know, are so nice. Anytime you're feeling bad about yourself, I should just you need come, to come on, on because three. this is the nicest, nicest group of people ever. I feel so lucky to get to be all your friends now. So absolutely, fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Tea bags or coffee pods. Uh, Judy Dilly is saying, I love that. Um, you could, yes, Monica, rick you rack. could use Rick Rack. Absolutely. Rick Rack. Um, a little um, pom-pom trim would be cute. You could also, Sharon says nail stuff or gift cards, um, you could put like ribbons and stuff hanging down from this cute. as well. So you could have like lace and ribbons and stuff hanging down. I think that would be kind of a fun idea Okay, too. wait, I know this isn't like the Mayday cone, but mm -hmm. you could turn it into a party hat, guys. Think how cute that would be. Like if you just made it flat, <laughs> like for your little kid's birthday parties. There you go. With the so ruffles. Cute. Oh. It I'll tell so you how you, how you make it flat. This is how you, if you want a flat one, if you don't want the upper um, mountain peak of the cone, to make it flat, you would um, make it as a semicircle. Oh, yeah. So you make it as a semicircle circle. rather than a triangle. So the triangle is what's going to give you this look. If you want to do it as, as, as um, just a flat cone, like for a party hat, that would be a... Um, semicircle is the what you would start just with. Just speaking to me, and I was like, "I'd be know. cute as party hat." Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, Lynn said a gift card to a local ice cream shop. Yeah, that would be really Darling. fun too. So, and Sharon asked, "Is Berkeley new?" She is kind of new. She's actually she's not uh, normally not with us with like the sewing aspects. She's more behind the scenes because she's our new HR director. Fun stuff. Which we love. Love, love, love. So her and I uh, were down here uh, today for a visit. So anyway, um, all right. I love it. That's it. So pretty one. easy peasy. What do you guys think? Um, oh, oh, advent calendar. That would be cute. <gasps> oh, and that, like ooh. you could just make like a You lot could of do them. a banner of these and have that little so things in them and have it be an advent calendar. Put the number on there. Oh, that would be fun. That would be so darn. I love that.